Hello and welcome to 2022. We have a new year and I'm glad to say we continue on our YouTube channel as we have last year and we want to help you, educate you. And as you know, for those of you who have come to our videos and watch our videos on a regular basis, the word for 2022 is engagement. So what we really want to do is work with you, engage with you, get more in touch with you, get feedback from you and really serve you. And at the beginning of every year, you probably are very familiar, the media is always drumming on it, about New Year's resolutions and how can we actually get some of the things done that we have either all along wanted to get done or we actually want to start something new. And I wrote some articles in 2021 about the great resignation. People are unhappy with their circumstances, unhappy with their money situation, unhappy with where they are right now, and they're quitting their jobs and their circumstances in droves to look for new things. That's one thing that I want to address in this context of what do we do in the new year, when a new year starts, when we have this new energy, the days start getting longer, and we want to achieve new things, especially now that we had a little bit of time over the holidays to relax, re-energize and get ready for new things. Now, for anybody else who has been with us in the past and is maybe a mentoring client or has seeked our, looked out for our support, watched videos and so forth, there have been goal setting sessions for individual meetings that we had, but also overall goals, which I call B-hacks or big, hairy, audacious goals. When you think about what IWG, Idea Wealth Grower, actually does, is we want to help you develop a passive income portfolio that helps you to reach your individual time freedom point, the point where you no longer have to exchange time for money and basically have enough passive income from your portfolio so that you can do all the things you need, cover all your expenses and live your passion to the fullest extent. Without going into further details, one of the very early parts of that whole process and what we go through when we do our mentoring sessions is to say, okay, so where are we with the goal or goals? And when the new year starts, we want to definitely recalibrate. A hack would be I want to generate a passive income portfolio that pays me $6,000 a month forever and keeps growing from there. That's a huge, big goal. For the year 2022, in this case, you might have smaller goals. And to help you setting goals and really make them stick and not just somehow verbalize them and then not necessarily really being able to follow through, I wanted to give you a tool that you can use to be more successful with goal setting. And that tool was developed with my friend, Harry Shade, who is no longer with us and myself. And we call that the smartest goal setting tool. And so let me actually help you by showing how this actually looks like. So you should see here is the smartest goal setting tool. And I wanted to go through a little bit and help you understand what do I need to do with my goals when I'm following this checklist for smartest. And what that means is your goal initially has to be specific. So like I just said, a big, hairy, audacious BHAC goal is very broad. I want to reach $6,000 a month in passive income Maybe you want to reach that in 2025. A specific goal for 2022 would be something where you would say, okay, I want to increase my passive income from where it is right now by another thousand dollars a month at the end of 2022. Or you could do it slightly different and say, I want to increase a total of $12,000 of passive income in 2022. It is time bound and it is specific in how much exactly. So $1,000 a month or $12,000 over the total of the year is slightly different, but it's a specific goal and it has enough detail in it. The next thing that you want to ask yourself when you initially put that goal together or you mentioned this goal is, is it actually measurable and how can I measure it? Now, if you use this goal that is related to our topic, then measurable would be to say, okay, let's say we want to get $12,000 more passive income in 2022 than we had in 2021. So you may be in the process already or have started the process to add another property to your portfolio. As that property becomes your property, you go through closing, a tenant gets in, tenant starts paying money, you will start getting additional passive income from that. You might like to do some token-based 
real estate investment and you make those payments out of additional money disposable income that comes in and yes the rent income will be slower but so you have a little bit of that so every month now you will measure how much more am i actually bringing in and have i reached a point where i no longer have to build huge reserves because i already did that in 2021 so after i pay all my expenses I have this positive cash flow coming in and I can measure it and then add it together. I would recommend maybe use a little Excel spreadsheet so that you can see the increase from month to month to month to month that happens overall. And you can see the difference between how was it from January through December 21 versus January through December 22. And you will see as you go through the year, how much closer and closer you're getting to your $12,000. And it might actually trigger you to say, well, if it looks like halfway through the year that I'm not quite likely to get there, then maybe you want to emphasize and make more efforts to get another property that can be a passive income generator. It needs to be attainable, right? So if you say, okay, how much have the properties that I'm aiming to buy generated in cash flow in the past? And let's just say for sake of argument, you are investing with our recommendation in residential real estate, mainly single family, duplex, triplex, fourplex, nothing bigger than that. And you have in the past, because it's been such a good last few years, focused on single family properties and each one has been generating $250 in positive cash flow every month or 12 months of $250, that's $3,000 a year. And you know that you're currently in the process of adding one more of those properties, probably in the next few months. So you would know if they just do the same like before, that one new property will give you 3,000, right? If you aim and have in the past always been able to get maybe one or two more properties per year, which I actually, by the way, recommend to be your goal, then you could say, okay, so if I get two more in 2022 and they perform exactly the same, so another 3,000 plus 3,000, so that would be the 3,000 from the one I'm currently purchasing already started last year. And then I add two more, that would be $9,000. Is that attainable to get to 12? Well, I would call that a stretch goal because it would mean everything else being equal and every property that you get generating $3,000 of cash flow for you, you would basically have to get three new ones instead of two in 2022. Is that attainable? Yeah. But if you find it looks very unlikely, goals should not frustrate you. They should motivate you. They should be engaging for you. If you think, well, buying three additional properties to the one I'm already working on right now is really somewhat unrealistic, then you should adjust your specific goal from 12,000 maybe to 10,000 or 9,000 because you want to be able to make it happen. So that's what's meant by attainable. Now, the next part is relevant. Is it actually a relevant goal? Now, in our context with Idea Wealth Power, that is really not that much of an issue because we know that our strategy and our path is to reach the time freedom point, right? So anything that has to do with that in that sense is relevant. On the other hand, when you say, okay, what else would I want to maybe change? right? Like you might say, okay, yes, I want to get my $12,000 a year goal and I want to achieve that. And I'm going to stretch myself to add three properties so that I have actually a good chance to make that happen. But relevant is which way are you actually going? And you might say, okay, well, if I don't just go with single family, but maybe duplex and triplex, I can maybe accelerate a little bit. Yes, the answer would be that is still relevant because it still falls into single, duplex, triplex, fourplex. If you were to say, I've heard there is a really great opportunity in cryptocurrency and I want to park some of my cash flow in cryptocurrency, that would not really be relevant to the attaining of $12,000 a year in that goal. But, and that is one important thing to do, even though when you actually finish with this video, look like, wow, this is quite a process and you're right and it should be. But because of going through the process, you will find that you have a much, much better chance to actually make it stick. So by going through the process, I would definitely recommend that you also consider to say, well, if that's actually what I'm doing and the way I'm actually working about it, then how do I have a secondary goal? to also get a little bit into crypto stuff, or I take my cash flow if I'm not consuming it, 
Yes, I'm getting it, but I'm still having my work. I still have my income. I'm still covering my expenses. So then you can actually say, well, if I'm not consuming my cash flow, maybe I want to use my cash flow out of my passive income portfolio to put it into crypto rather than into traditional dollars. That would be a second goal. And you would apply the same smartest process to it. That's what I mean by relevant. If you just say, I want to add more passive income, totally relevant, and we have measurable, and we have actually found out, is it attainable? If it's something somewhat different, ask yourself, is this maybe a sub-goal or a secondary goal? So now we know, okay, our $12,000 is relevant, and how we get there is relevant. Now the time frame, you might say, well, this goal is not just for 12 months because I know myself. It is very unlikely that I'm closing on the property I'm working on right now and then add another three. But if I give myself 15 months, then it can actually happen, right? So instead of calling the goal and saying, well, this goal has to happen within this year, 2022, you can also say, I'm starting right now while I'm in the process of finishing up the purchase I started last year. And I want to achieve this goal of $12,000 extra passive income by the end of the first quarter of 2023. That's meant by the timeline. So it doesn't have to be just one year. It's just kind of like a more traditional thing, but it's totally acceptable to make it longer. Now, exciting. How does it actually get exciting? And the way that I recommend for you to actually make it exciting is in a sense to say, okay, let me visualize two things. What are my emotions and my feelings every time I fill in the numbers in my spreadsheet and see as they increase. How is that exciting to you? Are you maybe planning to have a little bit of a celebration every time you get another milestone of that? If you say, okay, well, if it gets to 3,000 more, now it gets to 5,000 more, now it got to 9,000 more, now it got to, you know, you can have these little celebrations in one of the change philosophies that I'm a big fan on, John Cotter calls it, celebrate the small wins. And you determine if they are small wins, medium wins, or large wins, but you want to have a little bit of a celebration. And you might invite other people so that you can also share a little bit about how you're actually doing with your goals. And then the R, the second to last part, is recorded. And yes, a lot of people say, write it down. And I agree with that. You should write down your goal. But what I think is a better aspect to do is try to visualize what will be possible. It's hard to visualize 12,000. Yeah, you could do like a little pile of money in some picture like that. But what I would recommend is make a little bit like a vision board or something like that, that actually shows these properties. And to make it a little bit more exciting is have something that shows your current portfolio with your current properties, and then imagine images on how these additional properties will look like, and maybe some images about the money and a little graph of how your passive income increases. Basically make a poster. There is a little bit of a thing that I want to mention to this about how our brain works and why I think even if up to this point, you have done everything that I'm recommending here, applying the smartest process, why is it so often that when we set goals that they kind of fizzle out and don't really become reality? And as much as that, also ask ourselves, why do we lose this excitement and energy that we had when we actually thought about it and talked about it and put this goal down? And I believe it has to do with how our brain works. And I want to tell you a little anecdote about this, just to make that a little bit more understandable. If you really remember back to the time when you went to, let's say, the first day of college or the first real day of college or the new job that you had, and you were actually going there, you figured out the address, you figured out how you dress and what clothing to put on. You made sure that the car is ready. You made sure that you left early enough. You figured out exactly using Google Maps or some other navigation on how to get there. And maybe if there is some traffic in the way, how can you use some alternative routes and all that kind of stuff just to make sure that you get there on time with a little bit of time to spare. And then you go into the building and they had told you already when you come in, you go to the registration and you get your badge made and they have the information about you there already and waiting for you. And then they take the picture and they put it together in a little badge and they give you a lanyard and then you go through the gate and you tie it and it works, the gate opens, you go to the elevator and then you either go to your classroom or you went to your cubicle and met the person to show you around. And if you think about it, there were a lot of details and maybe the second day you came in, you saw, oh, 
this big hallway has actually pretty interesting pictures and there are all the awards the company or the college has won and there is the statement for the vision that we are all working for and on and on. Well, think about that same process at the end of the semester or at the end of the first six months or the first year working for that job. Now you get up in the morning, you get dressed, you get your cup of coffee, you get into your car, you drive the same route that you have been driving for months and months on a daily basis. You talk to somebody on the phone while you're in the car and you're zipping coffee that you had prepared. You're going through the hallway, through the gate, into the elevator, to your cubicle or office. And if there were something happening on the way, some accident or some other thing, you wouldn't even realize that it happened. Why? Because our brain has this feature where it basically says, I really want to reduce the amount of information that I need to deal with on a daily basis, on a regular basis. There's so much input going on for this particular task of getting up and getting to work on time. I only need this set of information. So you won't even figure out if somebody were to ask you, hey, did you see that commotion in the hallway because the badge printer or the picture taker were broken? You would say, oh, no, I didn't even catch that. I went right through my badge works. Or did you see that they decorated the hallway with new colors? They painted it and put the pictures in different places. You wouldn't, right? Because your brain has decided all this stuff is irrelevant. So how does this relate to recording your goal? Well, it relates in such a way that you need to do something, come up with a little bit of a routine where your brain says this is part of the process and therefore being reminded of keeping awareness of this goal rather than making that poster that I said with the visualization of how you're actually going to feel and what it will be like to get to that goal. Just then to put it somewhere, you put it on the wall or something like that and then not really look at it that much anymore because it's going to be sitting there like a picture on a wall and you will probably catch yourself if you look around your apartment or house that you have pictures on the wall that you haven't really looked at in quite a while. How does this actually relate? Well, what I recommend for you to do is get yourself one of those little 365 day rip off calendars, maybe with a motivational quote on it or stuff like that. And then on that poster that you make, leave a little bit of room and a pen. And so the routine, and this is just a recommendation, you can make it in a different way as well. But the recommendation would be, so you put the poster in a place where it actually makes sense for you to go as part of your routine, take off the page for the day. Today would be the 4th of January. You read the little quote and then you take the pen and make a little scratch mark that you actually finished for that day. And if you keep doing this and you can move the poster around if you like, but going through this routine, you see the picture, you make the scratch mark, you read the quote, that process reminds you of that goal on a daily basis. And that is really, really important. So it's not just the recording in some way, I recommend a poster, but it's also important that you do a routine that keeps you engaged. And there it is again, the word for 2022, it keeps you engaged with your goal. And then the last part is shared success is always better and bigger success. And so you want to share the goal, you want to make other people aware, this is what you want to do. And you don't have to tell them the number, but you can tell them something like my goal in 2022 includes to get three more new properties in my residential property portfolio, or I want to increase my passive income so I get closer to my time freedom point and join all these millions of people who quit their jobs because they're looking for something better. And I want to finally be able to do the things that I'm passionate about and not just exchange time for money in that way. And you want to bring this up when you have different opportunities. The last part about the sharing is not just for the joy and you don't want to necessarily brag, but there's also an aspect of accountability. I would recommend you might have a group of people or friends or so forth who you like to share with more for fun, but you should look out for somebody. It could be your spouse, could be your best friend, somebody you do regular things with or somebody at business where you have that person as an accountability partner, where you make an agreement to say, hey, let's check in with our goals every two weeks or no less than once a month just to see how it's going. What did you experience? Is it still relevant? Does it work? Will you make the timeline? Do you need to make it a little longer and you need to adjust it a little bit? And this is also where the mentoring comes in. I want to actually be here with our team to support you. If you see this video and you haven't really been engaged with us a whole lot before, I want to make an offer to have a conversation, to be there for you, to serve you, to engage with you, 
and ultimately, if you like, to mentor you, not just in how to set goals and how to actually achieve your goals, but really more literally, how to actually develop a passive income portfolio so you really can join the people who are on the journey, what we call the investor journey, that you will hear much more about in 2022. And we want to make a lot of offerings and resources available to you as part of the investor journey so that you can identify what is your personal time freedom point and then also identify what's the journey for you and what are the different stepping stones on that journey that you want to go through to hopefully get on the path and ultimately reach your time freedom point. It's very important to identify the goal, use the smartest checklist as I presented it to you so that you can actually have a better opportunity to accomplish your goal. And the last thing I want to actually say is these little things that I mentioned throughout this video, for example, setting up the poster, putting the calendar with the quotes pages in, leave a pen there so you can make a little scratch mark for every day. So at the end of the year, you have 365 scratch marks. All those little things are the actual steps to take. You're not done when you got through the smarter system and set the goal and made sure that it meets all the criteria in the checklist, but you want to also identify the steps you need to take. What are the steps to record it? What are the steps to make the poster? What are the steps to share? What are the steps to actually engage with my accountability partner? And what are the steps to engage with us is go to ideawritesgrower.com, set up the strategy call for yourself if you haven't done it yet, and join us, take advantage of everything that we do so that you can come onto the ideal investor journey with us and we can work together towards your individual time freedom point and what we do to help you get there. So be well, stay safe. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up and help us engage with you and grow the community.